Decision making is hard, but it really doesn't have to be. Not when you know the secret to making decisions properly. I know how to make decisions properly. It's taken me 15 years to figure it out, but I'm gonna teach you that today. On making decisions, our mate Obama gives a great tip. If you are 80% of the way there, you have made your decision and follow through. But how do you actually get to that 80%? This video will teach you that. I've interviewed thousands of people in my life, especially for marketing roles. 90% of those people say that they use data to make data-driven decisions. They use data-driven insights. Not one of them actually can explain how they do it. But this video is going to explain how you do that in marketing. This video is going to tell you the common data that you should be tracking, how to house and look after that data so you can use it, and then ultimately how you use that data to make decisions. If you are new to marketing, if you are building your own brand, if you are starting something on the side, this is the perfect video and channel for you. I break down the big budget moves and make sure that you have the basics of marketing so you can introduce them into everything that you do. So what are we tracking? What are common data points that we need to track in marketing? Well, as always, we boil this down to the simplest version. We look at three different buckets of types of data and metrics that you need to be tracking if you work in marketing. The three buckets we have, brand awareness, lead generation, and product sales. Most brands in the entire world can be fit into these three buckets. All of your marketing efforts can be fit into these three descriptors. So let's go through what things to measure in those three buckets. When we look at brand awareness, it's not just our vanity metrics. If you're trying to grow brand awareness, the data that you need to understand is impressions and reach, your engagement rate, combined engagements, and video views. Next, we look at lead generation. So anything bucketed into this bracket needs to be looking at your engagement, your click-through rate, your CTR, your bounce rate, your conversion, and ultimately your sign-up. Moving on to product sales. For product sales, you still want to know what your engagement rate is. You want to look at your sessions, so sessions generated, time on website. You also need to be tracking your email open rate. You also want to look at your add to basket. How are you getting people from opening an email or from visiting your website on a session and putting things in your basket? Your UTM clicks. And of course, right at the end of the funnel, you want to track revenue. Now this is a broad descriptor and obviously there are hundreds of other metrics that go into there. If you are starting out in marketing and you are not sure what KPIs to be tracking, please reach out to me, leave a comment. I will get back to you because using the wrong data means that you don't grow as a marketer and it's often not clear what metrics you should be tracking. In order to set up your own metric for success, you really need to look at these buckets and think about what does success look like for your brand. Use these guardrails, but do reach out if you have trouble pinning down your core KPIs because what gets measured gets managed. If you don't have metrics and tracking, you are not doing marketing. So how do we house that data? Well, luckily for you, I have set you up a template within which to house that data. And this is the free template. It's with Notion, a tool that I absolutely love. I show you how to use it within this channel. So please do go check that out. But the big thing that people do when they're trying to use data is they actually don't set themselves up for success by housing it in a way that's accessible. A lot of teams and a lot of companies have retros and leave the data with index on spreadsheets. Putting it into a place that's malleable and built properly means that that data can actually be used to inform decisions and not just thought about and gathered and all that effort got into it and then left. So where do you house that data? In my free Notion template, head across to the link in the comments, head across to my Gumroad, grab all my free templates, let's go. So data is only as good as how you use it. It's all well and good tracking and measuring, but if you don't look at it, you may as well not bother. And to be honest, you may as well not bother with your marketing. Data needs to be understood. You need to understand what you're looking to see and what you want to see and what is an anomaly. And you need to be able to look at it in a snapshot. You cannot, as a marketer, even if you are a seasoned vet, spend your time trawling through data to find the anomalies. You need it to be front and center and very easy. But that is what this tool does. It makes it glaringly obvious if you are behind in what you are measuring. In order to set this up properly, you need to know your benchmarks. I've added some industry standard ones in, but they will be different for you. If you are a brand new brand, use the industry standards. If you are not, you should have an idea of what your average engagement rate is, your average engagements, all of those metrics you're trying to measure. You should have an idea of the averages. If not, pop along to your last few campaigns, get yourself a benchmark, because if you don't know where you're starting, you don't know where you're going. Now to track our data, we are using the ROI measurement template. This is because we're wanting to look on our return of investment. If you don't know what ROI stands for and how to measure it, go back to our old video and have a look at it. But if you see how this is set up for you, we are bucketed into types of metrics. We are looking at different types of formats, so campaigns, landing pages, the different marketing tactics we have, but also we have our lead metrics bucketed together. 
This Notion template is made so you can format by different types and have segmentation. So when you're building out this template, you want to make sure that you are segmenting by the type of campaign it is, the lead metrics, where it's at, but also adding new things into this that help guide your decision making and your segmentation. Data-driven decisions often means making decisions on what to pull back on and what to invest on. That's why this template is built to show ROI. If you want to learn more about ROI before using this template, please do go back to a video on ROI and it will talk you through what it is and how to set this up. But as far as housing data, this Notion template is built so you can see those snapshots. Remember, when you're using data-driven decisions, you want to have snapshots, not searching. So if we look at how this database is set up, we have the planning for the ROI where we can add in all the fields that will help us understand the snapshot. So we have the ROI that we are assuming to get from the benchmark, whether it's going to be medium, low or high. We have our audience. So if you're a multi-audience, you're segmenting by audience. You're obviously going to segment by date, segment by format. So campaign, landing page, video, all the other formats you have. If you want anything new, all you have to do is just start typing it in. And once you've typed it in, press enter to add it. Your lead metric, so that's the buckets that we're looking at when we're bucking it into metrics, what are we most interested in looking at, and your messaging. So it's good to understand what messaging changes. If you want to start segmenting and look at your data for other things, and you're going from just that top line to understanding your business more, to add a property, all you do is plus and add in your property. If you want to know more about properties, I give a full Notion tutorial, but let's assume you've seen that. So as you can see, you're adding in these properties as you're planning. So use this as you live and breathe. If we come down here, we have our snapshot. Now, Notion, the same as any process, is only as good as using it. So you need to make sure you stay on top of your data. Every time you are launching a campaign, you want to create a card by adding new and filling in all your forms. And you want to make sure that you're keeping it up. Within the cards, you not only want to know what your ROI is for a snapshot, but you need to add in the information down here on what the actual metrics are. This means that when you come to look at your snapshot, you will see what is low, what is high, and what is just what you're expected, basically medium. There's no need to get caught up in the nitty gritty of the data. You have a snapshot, and then opening each of these cards will tell you the exact KPIs that they drove. Using data properly means looking at anomalies. It doesn't matter about medium ROI. It doesn't matter about media performance. If it's at benchmark, it's not interesting. What you're interested in is where we're falling behind or advancing. If you're falling behind and it's key to your business, you need to understand how to bring it back to benchmark. If you're advancing, it's how do you double down and do more of this? And this is what we mean by data-driven decisions, using the information that we've already garnered to make decisions on where to pull back, where to step forward. And setting yourself up for success with data-driven decisions also means using this at the beginning of every campaign. When you are building out your campaigns, there is nothing worse than starting from scratch. Data-driven insights in marketing doesn't always just mean external research. What it means is having a system set up much like the one that I've given you for free, where you can base every campaign off actual data. So when your team or when you come to make your next marketing campaign, you want to be looking at what's driving high ROI and what is working for your brand. And instead of starting from scratch, when you're coming into these boards to build your marketing campaign, you're not only starting on the planning view, which is the initial one in order to start building them out, but you're also looking at the dashboard and understanding what tactics, what messaging and what formats worked. So your decision making around campaigns is based on fact rather than fiction and opinion. And stay tuned at the end because I've got the greatest hack to make sure that you are making the best data driven decisions. So setting yourself up with this dashboard means that you will not have to think about all the questions you need to answer in terms of where, when, what, how, what format, what messaging, what tone, what tactic. It will be there for you and it will mean that you know how to make those decisions. Now you have all the data in front of you, you can filter out by different things to learn more. So in practice, when you come to build your campaign, all of the information you need is right in front of you. You can make decisions based on tactics, on audiences, on key messaging, on even which metrics drive the most. It's powerful. But I did promise you a secret hack. So if we go back to this template, you will see that there is a property for overriding campaign. Where most marketing falls down is they measure the campaign as a whole on the success or failure of the whole thing rather than the little pieces and aspects of tactics. It's too broad to say yes or no to something being a success based on the entire 
thing. The best marketers in the world know that there is value in the detail. And it's caring about the details that take you from good marketing to great marketing. So you will see that this template is set up, that we have one overriding campaign and separate tactics. So the format is the tactic. Your measuring and your data housing and collecting is based on tactic. So you know, even if a huge campaign failed, if your email click-through rate was 60%, it will come up as an anomaly and you will know to focus on that. What this method and this template does is it separates the noise from what actually works. We need to stop measuring campaign by campaign and actually measure by output and tactic so we can dial in to where we make that difference for exponential growth. Hope you found this helpful. Please do watch the video on ROI. Check out the rest of my videos. I break down those big budget marketing moves and show you how you can do it for your brand yourself in your department. With over 15 years experience in startups and scale-ups, I've done all of the guesswork, I've done all of the assumptions, and I've put all the time in to get to the right conclusions. And I've built this channel so that you don't have to do that hard work. You can just come off the back of me, get my free templates, do my course, watch my videos, and be the best marketer you can be. Please do like, subscribe and follow along. I'll speak to you next week.